An interesting video was recently released by Sam Vakning, professional educator on the topic of narcissism and a self-proclaimed narcissist. In this video, see description box, he asks some very interesting questions. He states that we seem to have evolved into an increasingly narcissistic society. Therefore, are narcissists better adapted to succeed and survive in this new type of society? We find this perspective very interesting and we think Sam has a very good point. It seems that like the topic of narcissism has become a hot topic and we can find countless videos, articles, blogs, books, etc. on the subject these days. Everyone who recognizes and becomes aware of this type of personality disorder, if they are like us, feels like they have found a holy grail to why they feel so suppressed, wounded and dysfunctional in society and in relationships. Related to that, we also seem to be developing into two different polarizing groups where, we, where if narcissism and its related antisocial personality disorders are in one group, we are also at risk for developing, in, developing into another group of professional victim. Are we, who have been wounded by narcissistic abuse, simply no longer suited to adapt to a society where narcissistic behaviors have become the normal way to interact with others. Based on the concepts introduced in the last article on reality, if what we perceive determines what kind of reality we will experience, are we in some way responsible for lifting the veil on this sadistic and narcissistic dynamic in relationships? where we no longer see individuals for who they are, but rather a polarizing view of abuser and abused. Where do we draw the line? Should we even draw that line to begin with? What determines if someone is narcissistic or merely very confident and invested in their own self-interest and success? One measure that we proposed in the past, past article was that the defining moment in determining narcissism was the effect it had on the other person or people in the narcissist's relationships. Was the other person experiencing a type of devaluing in the relationship? In other words, for the narcissist to get his or her supply, it is necessary for the other person to be wounded in some way by the narcissist. Narcissists want to hurt others. They want others to fear them. They want others to envy them, pity them, love them and hate them. To do this, there are very specific behaviors that the narcissist will use as manipulation tactics to provoke these responses and reactions in the people around them. Is that what determines mal malignant narcissism versus extreme self-confidence? Can a person be extremely self-confident, successful and in control of the situations in their lives without hurting others in the process? Yes, they can. So why isn't that the new normal in society? Why isn't the movement of love and acceptance sweeping over the planet where everyone considers the benefit of all, whenever they make any decision? We think that this is determined by what we deem to be success. What do we value? Do we value money, power and status? If we do, then these are the things that we will try to obtain and we will form our personalities based on the accusation of how much of these things we have compared to others. It develops a society with a look what I have and you don't mentality. This in itself is a doomed society that promotes competition, envy and a sense of lacking in others where we have a group of haves and have-nots. Isn't that what we see? For some people they want to be successful, but to feel successful they must feel that you are not. The concept that both sides can be equally successful at the same time 
is not only undesired, undesired but incomprehensible. They must feel they have won. To win, there must be a loser. Narcissists make sure you are the loser. They do not consider themselves to have won anything if you do not lose. If we learn to hold love, acceptance and the value of others as our main focus, we will develop a society of caring, sharing and equal footing from which everyone is prosperous. Everyone has what they need and everyone feels valued. Can we stop trying to hurt others? Can we stop trying to tell everyone you are wrong and I am right? Can we stop feeling the need that the only way to be uplifted is to stand on the backs of other people and suppress them? It is a misconception that we have learned somewhere along the lines of time that to succeed another must fail. What is wrong with everyone getting an equal share? Why do some people feel the need to have it all at the expense of others? In a society that is becoming more and more narcissistic, those of us who would live by a code of ethics and moral compulsion to do what is in the best interest of everyone will certainly be consumed by those who are willing to do nothing but take from others without giving anything back. Narcissism will continue to grow in this case. Is it possible to love the world back to a state of wholeness and healed souls when there are others who cannot take that love, multiply it exponentially and return it to the world? It seems like a contagious infection, doesn't it? Can we stop the beast by feeding the beast? Or is the best solution to starve the beast? How can we fix this? If we hold a vibration of love and a heart-centered state of being, we should want to treat others with compassion, support and acceptance. To hold a vibration of fear and a center of focus that is only gained from external sources and no inner self-reflection is to live life based on a dominant self-imposed value of I am hurt therefore I must hurt you. To simply offer love, compassion, forgiveness, humility, acceptance and all other attributes that could be called fruits of the spirit, leave this person feeling too vulnerable, too insecure, too weak. What makes a person feel that these wonderful attributes that would change the world into a more peaceful and joyful experience for everyone or to be feared and rejected. We can only say that these people have themselves been abused of some point, at some point in their life. So in considering this, do we really have two groups of people or do we ultimately have one large human collective soul group who, at their very core of being, are all been, have all been abused? Is it true that if, if everyone is a victim, then no one is a victim? Can we also consider that to be in a perpetual state of victimhood is, at its core, a form of narcissism? Don't we feel drained by others who constantly seek our sympathy for all the wrongs they feel they have experienced in their lives? When we are seeking to make others aware of just how bad we have it, we are in fact seeking to manipulate others and provoke them in a reaction that feeds us their compassion, support and empathy. We want others to feel sorry for us. We want to blame our circumstances for why we feel so bad and we want others to see it too. Can't we be open-minded enough to realize that if we are constantly blaming others for what is wrong in our lives and in, or in society, we are maintaining an outward-only focus where we are not willing to see what part we had to play in the creation of the reality which exists within our own life circumstances. One of the telltale signs of what defines a narcissist is that they accept no responsibility for their own behavior. Everything they do is the result of someone else's mistreatment of them. 
everyone and everything around them are blamed for why they act the way they do and say the things they say. It's always everybody else's fault. To the narcissists, this validates in their mind their desire to devalue other people because to them they are always the one being devalued. Isn't this a state of victimhood? Can we see that it all depends on perception as to whether you fall into the abused or abuser group? Misery loves company. It is not an accident that this became a commonly quoted phrase. Do we only bond with people when we can relate to their pain and that we all have in common? If this is the case, we would like to understand why. Why are we a world bent on hurting each other instead of loving each other? What was the genesis of the need to hurt others? Most importantly, why is it growing? Why are we not stopping it? Why are we not choosing to bond over supportive and compassionate behaviors where we lift each other up instead of trying to tear each other down?